I know the camera is a little bit wonky, but then so am I. And uh, today I'm just going to get something on paper because this is a day, again, this happens. And uh, I was talking the other day, wasn't I, about how we get blocked when we look at um, things on Pinterest and so on and so forth and how harmful that seems to be. And I think it's killing art. I was looking at something today, um, just now on Facebook and somebody had painted something. I'm not gonna say where it was or who it was or what it was, but I think, I think it was a copy of um, a child's piece of work, a piece of work that had been done by an elementary uh, school child. And, uh, you know, I've got nothing against children, obviously. But if we're sinking to that level and we think that the best thing that we can do when we get out our paints is to copy something that they found on Pinterest by a child. Oh dearie, dear, dear, dear. Anyway, um, I'm painting here with my Viviva colour sheets, which I ripped up and pulled out of their container because um, I can't work with them when they're flippy flappy like this. I, I can't do that. So I've um, pulled them out and I'm just, at the moment, just um, making it up as I go along. That's a nice grey blue, isn't it? That's a combination of sap green and ink blue. And up here we've got, um, this is um, dusk orange and um, pastel orange and um, what was that one? That's uh, brick, brick red, I think, which are quite nice. And then as I go down, I'm sort of, I love that colour, this, this brick red. I think that's just fabulous, don't you? But you can't have, can't have too much of it. So I've mixed some of the brick red with some burnt sienna. And then let's mix that also with some uh, dusk orange. And then we'll go back to the ink blue for the stems. And then um, maybe we'll have some more leaves in this colour. Oh, yes. And then I'm going to mix some of the sap green with some ink blue again and we'll see what happens. I have no idea what's going to come out when I do that because I'm just, just, you know, uh, Just playing with colour. Just feeling I've got to, got to get something down. Got to get something on paper because otherwise, if I keep looking at all of this garbage on Pinterest, I'm going to scream. Now, I don't know whether this is going to benefit from it, but I could do some line work on here. A bit more of this brick red, I think. You can never tell once you've you got to this point. You can't tell what you've done, really, until it's dried. And I'm just going to add some darker shades underneath and on top 
some darker bits and pieces. And I think I said this before, I don't really look at my painting until I've done it. I noticed this a while back that what I do is I just uh, work on one part of the painting at a time and then when, um, when, it's, when I stop, then I look at it. Okay. If I can encourage you just to get your paints out and do something like this, um, then I'll be more than happy. I'm using a size 14. This is one of my brushes. This is a Craftmo brush going to be available at the end of the year. Quite nice, got a nice point. This colour here needs to be repeated down here. I think that's crim is that crimson? I think I think it is. Just a little bit. Just a little bit down here. Sort of balance it, maybe one leaf over here maybe one here, so that colour doesn't sit all on its own in the middle. Okay, we'll let that dry and see whether, see what I think. So before I go on with the next step in this painting, um, I'm going to, because I was thinking I would use some ink, so I'm going to try it out. This is um, Sennelier Walnut, um, what does it say? Uh, walnut Stain ink, and I'm going to open that. I, oops. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say I've given it a bit of a shake, I, which I have. I'll just grab a tissue there and clean up my... Mess. Um, I've got three pens here. I don't know if any of them are going to work at the moment. I haven't touched them for a little while. It's been a while since I used these. So uh, we've got um, these ones. This one's an italic writing pen. These two are more um, sort of pointed. I stuck one of them in my hand the other day and made myself bleed <laughs> down here. You can still see it there, you see. Not a good idea. Uh, anyway, let's see whether this works. And this is a, a sketch here that um, I was playing around with mushrooms and things like that. So let's just see what happens. Probably a good idea to stand your ink on something. Ugh, God, Diane. Honestly, right. Is this going to work? See, I'm not looking for even lines. And it's just as well, really, because I'm not going to get them. Okay, that's good. This one's working. So I probably don't need to look any further than that. That's working. That will be fine. So I think I'll use that. Um, but I'll pop that there for the minute and I'll just try this calligraphy one since I've got it here and see what that does. That's going to give you a much thicker line, obviously, if you use it on the broad side. Yeah, I, I think probably that doesn't feel so comfortable. This one is probably very similar to the first one.
Yeah, that's very similar. So I think I'm going to stick with the first one because I quite like what that was doing. Now, let's see. Um, don't know what I'm going to do. But let's start in the middle. Can you see? Let me just push that up a little bit. You can see most of it, can't you? If I turn it like that, and I'll sort of lean over a bit. So I try not to knock my ink over. Um, let's put that there. So in order to use this, you just literally dip the pen into the ink and um, start to draw. So the, the beauty of this is that you can go thick and thin. It's, it's not dissimilar to the effect that you get with the, um, the, the brush pen, the, not brush pen, you know, well, it is a brush pen. The one that I've been using, this Kuretake Fudenosuke, I'm going to be speaking Japanese for I know where I am, aren't I? The Tombow um, pen, which has a hard and a soft, a, sort of the same brush, you press a bit harder and it goes thicker. And uh, release the pressure and you can do quite fine lines. And this is, this is quite nice because I, I don't know why, you just keep pressing light, heavy and light and don't don't go exactly where you put the paint um, allow your hand and your mind to wander as you do this and you'll get a much more appealing aesthetically appealing result Less is more. And as you go down, you'll, you might want to add a few squiggly bits and bits and pieces and stuff. I'm going to have to keep popping up to make sure that I'm still visible. And let's have a nice big leaf here. This, uh, these pens, you can get them easily on Amazon, probably on Temu, but Amazon, I'll, I'll put a link, there'll be a link in the description below the video to a set of these, and I'm trying to remember the name of the manufacturer, manufacturer, manufacturer of these pens. You can still get these same ones that I'm using. If you, if you do the strokes really lightly, like that, you can get a very fine effect. Don't have to press super hard, but if you do, you get a thicker line. It's quite nice to have a few empty ones like that. It's amazing. Today is August the 20. Sixth, and the temperature is about 11 degrees centigrade, which is um, 50 or something like that uh, Fahrenheit in France, northern France, admittedly. But we've, yeah, it's not nice. The weather is quite bizarre. It's been the strangest summer I've ever experienced, actually. Feels very short. It's, it's normally, I mean, it's exactly like living when we lived in Alberta. Um, cattle, cal uh, Calgary. Um, the summer was beginning to be over by August. I remember one year when we lived in Canmore, it snowed on August the 7th. And I said, I, can't, I don't think I can cope with this anymore. I know, I'm a bit of a weather freak. I get too upset by, by weather. Always have done. It affects me. So this is really, really nice to do because the result is uh, beautiful, I think. And it's just, you can just, you know, talk about playing.
I should do more of this actually. This is very uh, fun and please do enjoy this process. You, you know, these are just blobs, but you can turn them into all sorts of really interesting leaves, much more interesting than the ones I do. You could come up with God knows what brilliant ideas, you know. And on this one here, we could, for example, do, you know, not just smooth lines, but we can do uh, like beach leaves. And then you can use the pen to draw in the little bit of stem that joins the leaf to the branch or twig. Have to be a little bit careful because I don't want to touch what I've already made wet. It'll take a while to dry. So maybe if I <clears throat> leave the middle bit there for a second, go up to the top. I'm not quite sure, actually. Uh, oh no, I don't know. Maybe not. Perhaps we'll just carry on here. And you can see I'm holding the pen a little bit. I'm not holding it right up here and being very precise. I'm holding it further up. And part of the reason for that is to guarantee the looseness of my strokes. And part of the reason is that's the only way I can make sure I don't put my hand on the, on the painting. And also it helps you to see what I'm doing too. I noticed today, Tamsin pointed it out, um, a, a message on her community post from Emma, uh, uh, Ellen Crimmy Trent about drops, dropping views on YouTube. And she's worried because people don't seem to be watching her as much as they used to. It's not, it's not her fault. It's the same problem that we've noticed and I've taken steps we have taken steps to improve the situation. Um, it's YouTube. And uh, for those of you who haven't heard me ranting about this yet, um, and for those of you who want to hear me do it again, the thing is, as I see it anyway, a little while ago, this is, this is my analysis of the situation. A little while ago, YouTube changed um, what they call the monetization policy. And for those of you who aren't YouTubers, you might not know that YouTube has a policy whereby if you had, uh, if you have at least a thousand subscribers, and if over the course of the previous uh, short period of time, you had gathered at least an a thousand, no, sorry, how many? 4,000 uh, hours of viewing time. So people had watched you for a total of 4,000 hours. Not any one individual, but people in general. Then, and if your content was appropriate for what they want um, and good quality, if you did that, then you could apply to be monetized. And that means that you would be paid for the adverts that YouTube puts on your channel. Now, they put the adverts on anyway, so we can't control that. But until you get to that certain size, you don't get paid for it. So we are just vectors of advertising. Um, regardless, you can't control it. You can't say, no, I don't want adverts. You can say that, but they won't take any notice. They just go ahead and do it anyway. Okay, so it's better, obviously, for us to be monetized. 
And as soon as we could, we applied for monetization. So that means that we get paid a little bit, not an awful lot, but a little bit of money for each video that goes up, which means it makes it obviously more viable for us because we have to eat, same as everybody else. And that's our source of income. And everyone else I'm aware of who has a decent sized channel is doing the same thing. Um, everybody applies for monetization. Well, not everybody actually, some people don't, but they have reasons why they don't. Anyway, so recently, uh, YouTube changed its policy and they said that channels no longer needed to have a thousand subscribers to be monetized. They could be monetized with a scant 500 and no longer did they have to have 4,000 watch hours. Um, they only needed a, a smaller amount. I can't remember what actually, off the top of my head. Uh, I can't remember what the watch hours was. And this would make you able to monetize, but only partially monetize your channel. This would mean that you would be able to offer adverts on your channel and, uh, but not be paid for them still, but you could have um, membership and you could sell product. So in other words, people would be able to join your channel and uh, become a member. YouTube shares in that amount of money. If you pay $2.99 to be a monthly member of our channel on YouTube, YouTube takes <clears throat> some of that, quite a lot of it actually. I, th I can't remember the percentage, but they take a good chunk. Uh, that's fair enough. They run the platform. They deserve to get paid for it. Uh, we benefit from it. We don't pay rent, but that's what we pay. We pay commission for your membership on your memberships. So that meant, this is a long story, I know, but you may, you can always mute me if you don't want to hit, if you don't want to learn this. So that meant that they were encouraging small channels to grow bigger and to become monetized, which helps them, helps YouTube make more money and helps the channels to prosper. In order to encourage them, what do they do? They show those small channels to people like you and hope that people are gonna be interested by the novelty, by the new channel that they've never seen before and that they'll subscribe and that maybe they'll join and so on and so forth. This consequently, since you can't watch two channels at the same time, this means that those channels are competing with existing channels like me and Ellen and Emma and Lindsay and all the rest of us competing for the same views. Which means that in order for us to be seen by you, we have to try harder. You will have noticed that I have been trying harder recently. My thumbnails have become more punchy content is slightly different and we're working on putting as much out there as we can to persuade people to keep watching. And so far it's working. So, and the best thing that you can do from our point of view, in my opinion, is to go to our channel homepage and watch videos from there. So you go to Diane Anton Studio on YouTube, just click on my face, wherever you see my ugly mug, click on that and it'll take you to the um, channel homepage and then explore there. You can look at the videos um, in order of popularity. You can look at them in date order. You can visit the uh, playlists and look for particular subjects. Um, you can see the most recent ones, you can find the shorts that we've made, everything's there. You can find the community posts. Um, and if you're a member, there's a special section there for you as a member. Um, so that's all there. If you go there, there's a very good chance that YouTube will register that you're interested 
in our videos because you've gone to the home page and they're more likely, therefore, to show you our videos when we put up a new one. They'll give you a notification. So that's that. And I hope I haven't bored you to tears. As you can see, this is a fairly lengthy pro 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 project. <laughs> and uh, so I'm just literally painting in all the petals, just making it up as I go along, trying to keep it reasonably appealing to the eye. Varying the pressure on the pen from hard to soft. So if you have any questions about what I've just been talking about, do pop them in the comments below. And I'll do my best to answer them. And if I don't answer any comment that you have, it's because it's got lost amongst all the, the others. So just send me an email at diananton, sorry, at uh, studio at diananton.com. And uh, then I will answer. So there we are, that's that done. And yeah, there we are, that's, uh, let me take that off and just show you what uh, what's what. So that was quite fun. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm not gonna say another word about channels and YouTube and all the rest of it. That's enough for one day, I think. So I'll let you go. Have a lovely week and I'll see you again soon. So bye for now, everybody. Bye bye.